CGTN, China Global Television Network. There are few words that can truly describe the forbidding, untouched splendor of the desert in northwestern Kenya. A land which looks so unyielding and barren today, yet millions of years ago was the birthplace of mankind. In 1984, a team of archaeologists unearthed the most complete fossilized Homo erectus skeleton ever found. This was dated to about 1.6 million years ago and gives Turkana its nickname, the Cradle of Mankind. The skeleton was dubbed Turkana Boy, and the original can be found at the Nairobi National Museum. The area is also home to the world's largest permanent desert lake, Lake Turkana. But despite all of this, Turkana County remains one of the poorest and most arid areas in Kenya today. This week, we take a walk through Turkana and meet the local people who call the area their home today. We also look at some developments and ask, does the significance of living in the cradle of mankind actually filter down to the local peoples? I'm Beatrice Marshall from the cradle of mankind. Welcome to Talk Africa. The archaeological findings of the Turkana Basin have given us priceless information on everything from human and animal evolution to climate change. Before we begin our journey to modern-day Turkana, let's take a look at the ancient history of the area. I am here at the Nairobi National Museum to speak with Kenya's leading paleontologist, Dr. Frederick Manthi, who's been studying fossils in the area for over 30 years. Dr. Manthi, what do we have here? How old are they? What is the most fascinating thing that you have here? This lab houses one of Kenya's very unique heritage, the fossil remains of, of animals that lived as far back as 200,000 million years ago. And for example, this is one of them. And this is a, a crocodile that dates to around 1.2 million years ago coming from the Lake Turkana Basin. And among these wonderful collections, we also have this spine of a dinosaur. You can compare this with the spine of the fish that we eat all the time. And this tells you how big dinosaurs were. This particular spine, this particular dinosaur was found at, uh, at a place called Loktang, to the west of Lake Turkana. And, and, and it, 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 it did really, really reaffirms Kenya as the cradle of not just humanity, but the cradle of life. So I'm, I'm interested about that uh, cradle of life uh, situation because, I mean, why is Turkana so interesting? And, and how did Turkana look like about three million years ago, for instance? Turkana is really one place where we've witnessed the discovery of so many fossils. And we just spoke about the dinosaur mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. We have the, the white rhinos. We have the black rhinos there. We have these extinct ancestors of the modern day elephant, or you like the um, relatives mm -hmm. of the modern day elephant. Trukana, uh, the Lake Trukana Basin formed, has been very active in the last four million years ago. Mm -hmm. And the basin, all the different geological processes that have taken place, especially in the last four million years ago, really enabled the basin to provide a very conducive environment for animals to die there and get preserved there. Because that is what I was going to ask you, like, you know, uh, the importance of Turkana itself in this whole aspect of evolution. Indeed, Turkana has given us a wonderful, wonderful record, not only to, the, to our understanding about the evolution of our members of our own species, mm -hmm. but all these different fauna species that we can see here. I'll give you an example. Look at this particular uh, uh, elephant here. This is a, a re relative 
of the Asian elephant that we see in, in Thailand and other parts of Asia. We, you see those elephants that you see people riding, that same elephant lived in, in, in Kenya and in Africa. In fact, it became extinct around 100,000 years ago. I want to know about Turkana boy. Wow. Turkana boy uh, is not just a modern day Turkana boy. It's a fossil that has been named Turkana boy. It's a Homo erectus. Turkana boy was a young individual. How old is he? Who died at uh, around the age of between 8 and 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Turkana boy lived around 1.6 million years ago. It's one of Kenya's iconic fossil. And from Turkana boy, we are able to understand the developmental history of members of the genus and species Homo erectus. We are Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. And Turkana boy was Homo erectus. So Turkana boy uh, belonged to a species that came before you and I. And from Turkana boy, we are able to understand really how, as a species, members of our own species have evolved in the last 1.6 million years ago. Thank you so much, Dr. Manthi. It has been such an interesting and fascinating discussion. We're now going to go to Turkana to find out what modern day Turkana looks like today. Thank you. All the best in Turkana. Thank you. It's like stepping back a million years. Though it's now the rainy season, the landscape of Turkana remains hot and dry. Animals and people usually have to seek respite from the sunshine that soaks unrelentingly into every pore of their being. But despite the dryness and the heat, a singular beauty, unlike anything I've ever seen, exists here. This is the cradle of mankind. It's almost a divine feeling walking through here. As I imagine, millions of years ago, our ancestors hunted, lived, and evolved in this very spot where I am now. Life here today is still anything but easy. And as we start our journey through Turkana, we're joined by Alphonse Nawaton to show us what life is like now for the people who call the cradle of mankind home. Nawaton, thank you for joining us here. And it's really a beautiful scenery that I have seen in Turkana. Tell me about the life of the people here. Now the life of people here, it has just been a continuous thing. People are still like, they are fetching water from the lake they take up to their houses because they do not have those, those stuffs that they can use. The people are still using boats in order to fetch or to collect their fish. They are still smoking their fish in this place. So uh, we, we know traditionally the Turkana are nomadic, moving from place to place, uh, uh, particularly I think in search of pasture for their animals and in search of water. Has that evolved? Has that changed? It has not changed. It is still there because they are here for a season tomorrow they move to an another place. Now when they had the rain is maybe on Lokitown, they move to Lokitown. When they had there is a drought on a certain place, they move for, for another place in order to look for their pastures. Now, I, I also want to know about, um, you know, the, the whole significance of this cradle of mankind. You know, the fossil of Turkana boy was found not far from here. Has it brought any changes at all to the community? Okay, it has not brought any changes in this community because the community is still living in that, in that era that they were living. They were living in Manyatas. Mm -hmm. Up to date, if you go along these places, you will still get those Manyatas. Now you can understand that human boy was found in Narekotome. It has not bro brought any changes in this place. And I see here there is a, a village where the community is living. Tell me about this village. Okay, this is now the community they are living. They collect these trees from the lake and then they dry up and then they put the houses that you are seeing it here. And who built these houses? Uh, the one who built these houses, the, the, the mothers. Is this the way the community has always built their homes or this is a new version? They have been living here for a long period and this is how they normally stay. This is an old period, this is not a modern one. Mm -hmm. And mom is about to start cooking? Yeah, the mom is almost to start cooking. This is a mud fish mm -hmm. which we, she wanted to cook. Okay, and, and I see um, she has something which is supposed to be um, a knife. Okay, that is a knife. Uh -huh. yeah. And the fire, the way, oh, there is another fish actually cooking yeah. by the fire. 
This is a three stoner, right? Yeah, that's just three stone. This is how uh, traditionally the yeah. setup is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a traditional one. And what happens now during the rainy season? Because I know sometimes the the lake rises. Okay, they move from a distance again. When the rain moves, now they move a distance from this place. They go far away from this place. So how about the comfort of this house? The, the comfort is just good. It's like somebody who is in town already. Mm -hmm. Can you show me? Okay, I can show you. It's very interesting. It's very, you know, self-sufficient. The yeah. reeds are here. This is now the entry point mm -hmm. where they enter. This is sometimes where they sleep or they, they, they sell their, their things. This is now their bedroom, the sitting room for them. This is now the sitting room. At the same time, this is their bedroom. It's very and, basic. Yeah, and this is now their house. They put all of, the, all of their things. This is now like that. When the rain comes, mm -hmm. some people sleep here, some people sleep here. This is a store? Ah, this is like an house now. It's like a store, it's an house, it's everything for them. But it's strongly built? Yeah, it's strongly built. You look, they have their nest for, because for the malaria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. A nice basic structure and you have your containers yeah, for storing water? Yeah, they have their water. container for their water. Okay. So this is very interesting. They still maintain their traditional uh, way of life. Yeah, they are still maintaining it because the, ma the majority of them cannot afford those modern ways of now of living. Now, this, many of them are maintaining this because you can just get reeds here for free. You cannot buy the reeds. And what about other economic activity? Because we have seen, you know, the fishing. Uh, uh, we've seen a lot of fish here. What about any other form of livelihood? We have life is strong rare, rare in this place. Mm -hmm. Their life is strong also. That is the only core activity they are doing after fishing. So there is uh, still uh, goat herding or is it camel herding? Camel herding, mm, cows herding, life is, uh, sheep, goats, both of them they are doing it. So these are your grazing lands and I can see a lot of sheep. I've seen a lot of livestock. What is the importance of uh, sheep to the Turkana people? The important is they provide for them meat, they provide for, for them blood, they pro provide for them skin. This skin can be used sometimes to manufacture shoes. Some of these skins are used like their clothes. Some of them they are used like bed sheets. Mm -hmm. So I also had a story about uh, dowry, the use of uh, sheep in dowry or the use of livestock for dowry. How many, for instance? Let's, okay, let's, it, let's start from there. <laughs> okay, it depends now. If, you, if, if the dowry, which type of a lady are you going to marry? Mm -hmm. From which family? If you are going for a rich family, you also, you should be prepared enough to have those goats or sheep. How many? Like 400 cows, wow. 300 uh, goats and sheep. Mm -hmm. and, this, uh, and these cows that you are giving, they are, they are distributing it according to their families. The uncle, uh, the aunties. So generally, um, the, the Turkana people have used livestock as a, as a source of wealth as a source of, uh, uh, you know, food as well. So uh, tell me, do you see this tradition changing or is it remaining constant? Okay, the tradition is remaining constant because the majority of the Turkana people, mm -hmm. they do not have that financial. This now, the, the cattle you are seeing or the sheep you are seeing is their financial source. Basically, this is what your grandparents have been doing. This is what the community will continue to do. Yeah. This is what, what my grandparents are doing and we also, like me, are also practicing to continue making it as a, a, a continuation. So this looks like um, a different side of Turkana because it's not just about the fishing and the, you know, uh, livestock herding and the other rural area. Tell me about this town. Okay, the town has some development the way you can see. Like electricity, you see the school, hospitals are there. How old is this town? It's almost some 50 years back that down the line. And in, in terms of the electricity, that is a constant. What about running water? We do not have running water. We have three per week. We have three ice. 
of water and electricity. We have almost some five hours or six hours a day. Are you seeing uh, many of these towns coming up in other parts of Turkana? Yes, you are seeing it. Okay. Like now, Lodwa, in previous years, this was like this, but currently, it, it has some changes. Okay. Hey, Watong, thank you very much for taking us through modern life in uh, Turkana. Well, we are going to take a short break now. When we return, we will continue with our journey throughout Turkana. To stay with us. community program coordinator na friends of electricana e pa lo ni anam ko riai ala pu bacha atu wegi na bonga kro na ngaber kai na lo to ma pi e radi bonga kro nguna to kana ko arna ga kiza ka kutuku ake ana nga kro na e ko ko ile ko la ria ka ngaber ala to ma turkan as we've seen, the culture and way of life of the Turkana people is still very difficult and very basic today. But there are some community groups in the area that are dedicated to fighting for a better life for the people. Now, one of these is Friends of Lake Turkana. It was founded in 2011 and has been successful in bringing tangible change and benefits to local communities. We caught up with Eunice Ateo, its gender and justice coordinator, to tell us about what women's advocacy is and take a look at some of its successes. Eunice, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for being with us today. Now, what are these meetings about that you hold uh, with the women of the community? Uh, initially, Friends of Electricana was doing the protection of Electricana. And after that, we found that the community here see that it is better at least we expand to help our community in terms of marketing for women, uh, justice, and maybe leadership decision making. And from there, we also uh, did the increase in the participation of women in Turkana community because of the culture that the Turkana women were marginalized. So because that's, that's what I was going to, to ask you, because yeah. when we, we saw, um, you know, in the communities, we saw yeah. the women, uh, you know, cooking, we saw the women building the houses. Yeah. So what has been the traditional participation of women in the community? Okay, initially women in the community, Turkana community, have been doing all the cooking, taking care of the children at home, fetching firewood, uh, making sure there is water in the community, there is food. After we realized that uh, we, there's a need for these women, at least to women also to know that uh, women's rights is a human right. So we decided to at least have some meetings, mm -hmm. some barassas mm -hmm. with the women in the community, mm -hmm. telling them about their rights as women. That a woman is not only that doing household chores only that a woman is supposed to do. A woman also has to make decisions in the family. And also a woman has to have that leadership eh, skills, uh, to, make, to have leadership in the community. Are you seeing much change now since you beca began the advocacy and, and, and what impact is that having on culture? Okay, for uh, uh, Turkana men, they are now, now that they have realized that because you can see now some women making, doing businesses mm -hmm. and through those businesses they are really helping the family, you know. And now the, the women, men now have said, okay, so this woman, since he has been going for several uh, trainings, what he has come with something at least to sustain the family. So they have now seen it is really, it is really good for this woman to get empowered. So that, like now, g giving out to the, back to the family, giving food, being business, taking the children to school, paying school fees. You see, and then another one, we have also encouraged uh, some women groups. We facilitate them to go to public participations meetings, at least. 
to to give out some of the projects that have been incomplete in their areas. Like now this one, one of them is this one. We we went to the public participation. We we are, we facilitated the community monitors and the officer to come to the to to, to kind of North educators where they cannot even walk by, by themselves, but unless somebody take them there. Because we've actually seen a, a, a lot, a, a very big water problem mm. in, in, in Turkana. So how many of these uh, water tanks or the water projects um, have been initiated and, and how much of the community is benefiting from this? Okay, like for this project now, it is the Engomo village. This is what we are in Engomo village in Lower Ranga. These are the communities of pastoralist people. And we, you can just see it because they are very far, but they have houses down there. I, I want to find out as friends of Lake Turkana, yeah. what did you do to ensure a project such as this uh, becomes actually feasible for the community? There is a day we, we were here with a meeting with the community and then they identified this project as one of the stalled projects which the county government have not finished. And then my director now uh, write a letter to the county government through the community that there is a project in, in Ngomo which has not been completed. And we normally, not only this one, all projects that have been stolen in this, in this ward, we normally take there and then we push for the county government at least to complete this project. And uh, lucky enough, we have, uh, some projects have now complete because we have this one, we have the social hall, we have the market for the women, and we have all the ecology. They are now all under construction and some have already finished. All right. Yeah. Uh, what more do you think, though, needs to be done? Or some of the bigger challenges that still need to be solved for the community here in Turkana. What more do you think should be done for them? Okay. First, I think the county government, before uh, it, it does anything, should come first to the committee grassroots to ask for the priorities. What are the priorities the communities want to be given first before they do anything? The county government has to take that from the community but not them giving the community what they, they don't want. So that is what I want, communication from the, from the grassroots to the county government. So because you cannot just give an, uh, maybe now a, a project to the community which, cannot, which is not even very important to them. They have to start from the community, give their priorities what they want from, the, from their community, and then the county government to, to implement that. Yeah. All right, yeah. Eunice, thank you very much. Okay. In addition, other groups have been formed with a more direct focus of providing employment and income generating activities. I caught up with Jennifer Tioko in Lodwa, the chairperson of the National Women's Organization in Turkana County, to tell us more. Hi Jennifer, and thank you for meeting with us today. I want to start by understanding what your organization is about, this uh, women's organization, Maendeleo Ya Wanawake. What is it about? Maendeleo Ya Wanawake organization Niki, ki, niki kundi cha kina mama ambao wamekuja kwa pamoja ili kuweza kuondoa zile shida ambazo mwanamke anapitia pia ni moja wapo ya kumuelimisha mwanamke kuwa kama yule mwanamme anaweza pia kusimama katika viti za kisiasa kama yule mwanamme anaweza pia fanya kazi kama yule mwanamme hiyo ndio vile maendeleo ya wanawake ilivyo what, what are the type of challenges that uh, the women in Turkana uh, face currently because you've talked more about uh, uh, their position in leadership their position in economic development what are the challenges facing the women here hawana mahali ambapo wanaweza peleka hata hizi vitu ambazo wanaweza ukiangalia hapa ndani tuko na, na, na soko ya kina mama hawa wamama wanajitahidi katika kutengeneza vikapu na ukiangalia huyu mama anakosa mpaka hata soko ambayo anaweza peleka hizi vitu kuuza ana, ana distance yani hiyo umbali pia inamuumiza huyu mama alafu pia fedha ambazo zitamhusisha huyu mama pia kuweza kutembea na kupeleka hizi vitu zake katika soko Ina, a, anaweza kosa kwa sababu hakuna kitu ambacho anakifanya hata akishona hizo hizo vikapu 
lakini bidii na kazi ambayo anafanya akipeleka katika soko ambayo mwanamke atapeleka itamsaidia yeye pia ku, ku, kujiinua katika maisha umeona kama miradi kama hizi zimesaidia wamama uh, kwa kiasi gani miradi kama hii ambayo kina mama wanafanya imesaidia kina mama kuleta hata chakula kwa meza kupata hata hizo fedha za kusaidia nyumbani kupata hata hizo fedha za kusomesha watoto wao kupata hata hizo fedha za kuweza ku fanya yale mambo mengine wanawake wengine wanafanya. Sasa hawa wamama unawaona ni wale ambao wamechukua hatua ya kuweza kuja hapa na kujiunga katika eh, nyumba kama hii na kila mtu ako na bidhaa yake. Ukiangalia kwa sasa hawa wamama wa, wanajaribu. Maisha yangu ilikuwa mimi mwenyewe nikitoka nyumbani kama sasa tajiri ananiita niwoshe manguo. Ninaosha Natoa hiyo pesa naweka kidogo kesho tena naenda kuosha kwa mwingine natoa kidogo naweka nanunua vitu kama hii naweka hapa. Mm -hmm. Na kwa saa hii unaonaje manufaa? Naendelea vizuri. Naendelea machangamko mzuri sana kwa sababu saa hivi ile tuko. Hivi kafu nikiusa mtoto anaenda na shule. Nikiusa naweka kidogo nanunua naye hiyo. Ndio nafanya mimi nikae hapa. Na kile mama mwenye mama mwenye alisema hiyo ndio tunaendelesha nayo. Traditionally, what has been the role of the Turkana woman in the community, in the family? I mean, what have they been doing? Katika eh, apo awali kabla wa mama hawajatoka na kuona nje. Kazi ya kina mama ilikuwa ni kukaa tu chini. Kunyonyesha watoto, kuchukua jukumu ya kuweza kuchunga nyumbani, kwenda kuchota maji, kwenda kupika, hiyo ndio ilikuwa kazi ya mwanamke. Yule wa ambaye ako katika reserve lakini ukiangalia hawa ambao wako town saa hizi wameona mbele ndio unaweza kuona sasa kazi ambayo wanafanya ukiangalia hapa ndani hii ni kazi ya mwanamke sio tena kazi ya yule mama mwenye alikuwa akikaa pale nyumbani awali so it does look like uh, times have changed what more assistance do you think uh, the women in Turkana uh, would like to have or to see or to be given mwanamke mturukana angepata mahali ambapo angepata kama soko kubwa Tuko na shida ya soko hapa. Mwanamke mturukana akipata soko, ataweza faidika. Mwanamke mturukana akipata mahali anaweza kuketi permanent na kufanya kazi yake, ataweza faidika. Mwanamke mturukana akipata fedha za kumwezesha kupata kile ambacho anahitaji kupata katika kazi ambayo anaweza kuwa nafanya, itamsaidia sana. Jennifer, thank you very much. Thank you. The beauty of the lake, the history of the cradle of mankind, and the survival of the local people are just a drop in the ocean when it comes to the depth and diversity of life today in Turkana. In many ways, the indigenous people still live like they have for hundreds of years, so there is a long way to go in terms of development in the region. The cradle of mankind is one of the most significant places in the world for us as human beings. But for the local communities who struggle to survive here, it means little. The efforts of community groups like Friends of Lake Tukana and the Maendeleo Yawanawake is bringing some positive change, but a lot more needs to be done by the local and the national governments. So with greater effort to reverse the effects of climate change and increase development in the area, this desert wonderland can flourish. I'm Beatrice Marshall from the cradle of mankind in Turkana, northwestern Kenya. It's goodbye for now. Okay,